In the last large number of videos, we have been practicing with calculating derivatives of functions at a given point. Uh, and what we're going to start doing now is start transitioning into making the situation a little bit easier for us to do. Um, and uh, eventually it'll get pretty darn simple. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is I want to think about um, what we've been doing is I've been giving you a function and giving you a specific input value and we've been calculating the derivative at that value. And what I want to do now is I want to look at a situation where we're calculating the derivative of all input values at once. All right, so let's see how that's a little bit different. There's a little bit more work and a few extra variables to toss around, but the plus side is that we're going to have a rule that we can apply very simply. All right, so let's kick off with uh, this problem that we've been doing quite a lot, which is f of x is equal to x squared. And this time, instead of finding the derivative of this function at 1 or 2 or 4 or something like that, we're going to find this for just some arbitrary value of x. OK, so we're going to put this into the formula just like we've been doing up to this point. This is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. All right, and this is just our second definition. Sometimes when you see this, instead of this being in terms of x, we might see delta x instead. So delta x means the change of x. So you might see somebody talking about the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. And delta x is just another variable name, um, but it means the change in x. So it's, it's a little bit clearer that we're talking about as the change between the fixed value and the moving value approaches 0. Uh, but for now, I'll just stick with h. All right, so now we're going to just expand this out. So f of x plus h, since we're just squaring the input value, this is going to be x plus h quantity squared minus x squared all over h. Whoops, the limit as h approaches 0 of that. All right, and just like we've done before, we can expand this. So that's x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared over h. And just like when we were calculating this at an ordinary value, um, we're going to have nice canceling happening. So my x squared and negative x squared are going to cancel each other out. This is the limit as h approaches 0 of 2xh plus h squared over h. And once again, like before, we're going to have some nice canceling out that happens. So this is the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h. And as h approaches 0, that term, this term goes away. And so our answer is just 2x. All right. So if f of x is equal to x squared, then the derivative of x is equal to 2x. All right, so there's a nice cool result that um, we can now calculate the derivative of x squared at any point. So back when we were trying to find this derivative at 2, the answer is going to be 4, double 2. Uh, when we found the derivative when x was equal to 4, we found out that it was 8. And now we don't need to do any work at all to figure out that it's just 2 times whatever the input value is. That's only true for this function, obviously. Different functions are going to have different derivatives. <clears throat> but this is starting to make this process 
a little bit simpler to understand. And we'll look at some more examples of this in later videos. But now, from now on, whenever you see a derivative question that's talking about x squared, you don't even really need to do the work. All you need to do is remember that the derivative of x squared is 2x. And so one of the, so that's one way in which this is getting a lot easier. Uh, what we're gonna see though is that is there some way to remember that the derivative of x squared is equal to 2x or do we need to remember the rules for each individual function? And uh, as we start to work on these, I hope you'll see that the pattern is going to get uh, really easy to remember going forward.